meeting. Special meeting for Tuesday, June the 7th, 2022. Roll call, let the record show Council Member Lopez is excused tonight. And we have approval of agenda. No changes. No. Make a motion to approve as read. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the agenda as printed. Councilmember Alvarado? Yes. Givens? Yes. Espinoza? Yes. And Prop? Yes. Public comment. Do we have anyone who wants to speak now with public comment time? Nobody sat in the front row either. What can I say? That's all right. All right, we'll close the public comment time. We'll go straight to management reports and Mr. Gabriel. Certainly, Mayor and Council, we're, <clears throat> this evening we're uh, presenting to you a draft of the proposed FY22-23 operating budget and CIP capital improvement mm -hmm. plan. Uh, this is a, a proposed budget. So this is you actually look, taking the first look at the budget rolled up. We've had various workshops leading up to today, uh, which we covered revenue projections, expenditures, but this is the actual budget book uh, presented to you. So there's no formal action being asked of you this evening in terms of approval or otherwise, uh, this is your opportunity to provide feedback to, to us, uh, staff, uh, also to raise any questions, concerns uh, about the budget, any departmental line items in particular, and during your review that may have caught your attention and you want further explanation from myself, finance director, or department directors. As you can see, our directors are, are in the audience. So there's something specific about a particular department budget or line item, uh, they're available to answer any questions. This is an interactive process. The first portion of the workshop will be our administrative services director uh, presenting an overview of the budget. Uh, and then I will have a conversation with you about the budget requests being presented to you. We previously presented them to you. I've gone back and had further discussion with the department directors. And then we uh, eliminated some of those requests. And so I'll be presenting that to you. On that particular item, we will be asking for a thumbs up or thumbs down on some of those items that I'm recommending that we fund. Um, but that is still at your discretion. This is just, that's just the city manager's recommendation. Uh, but you again have uh, at your discretion to approve or not approve them. And the way to do that, just give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. For those items that you do approve to move forward, uh, in terms of the additional request, those will be included in the final budget for uh, the 21st. So the budget that's presented to you this evening does not include these items, okay? It's just the operating budget without the additional request. So depending on what your action you take tonight, what direction, then we'll include those in the final version on the budget for the 21st, okay? okay. So with that, I'll go ahead and hand this off to uh, our finance director. So go ahead, Roger. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Council Members. So we would like to, um, I'd like to introduce you the draft of the budget book. And uh, the first thing is, um, is to give you an overview of, of the electronic version to see how that works. It'll be very brief. And after that, we'll go into the actual book and to provide into specific pages. Uh, for clarification, the city manager will present additional information after I'm concluded. So I'll share my screen with you. Okay, can you see the screen? Yes. So, um, just really brief, um, we do have a table of contents and the table of contents, if you use the electronic version, it has links so that when you click on it, it jumps into the, the specific pages um, for those who have the electronic version. We also have a roadmap, we have um, bookmarks and that's uh, that, that way you can navigate through the budget book as well on electronic version. So as you can see, it has various uh, component, the major areas. So for example, if you wanna look into the general fund by departments, uh, you can also drill down and you can see the specific departments and you can jump into the specific departments and it'll provide you that information. So um, on each area, 
uh, you can click on it and it'll provide you, it'll take you to that page. Um, on the, we also have the appendix, which has uh, some budget policies and re resolutions and employee benefits, but it also has um, a uh, glossary of, of terms, just uh, if you have questions into various terms. So with that, um, I'd like to get into the specifics of the budget. So we'll start with the um, um, general fund summaries. And uh, within that, uh, on page uh, 44 of the uh, budget document, um, it provides a summary of the general fund. And specifically, if you, if you look at the screen, uh, it provides you a profit and loss of the general fund. You can see multiple years, and you can also see the 21-22 uh, revised budget, year-to-date number, and eventually at the right side, you will see the uh, what is proposed for the upcoming year. You can see the revenues and then the ex expenses. Uh, from this point, you will see the operating loss. So this is uh, revenues and expenses for daily operations. Um, below this line is for non-operating expenses. So this includes capital expenditures and transfers. So at the end, you will see that uh, the net income or loss. And for the upcoming proposed, we do have a balanced budget for the general fund with an estimated $1.9 million of surplus. And um, um, again, uh, the city manager will present additional information and that might, this will change depending on, on your feedback um, for the final budget. So to me, the elephant in the room here is we're nowhere close to budgeted for the actual on this year. I mean, we budgeted 35 million to, if I'm reading this correctly, to show $600,000 net income. The actual is 23 million to show a $6 million loss. Yeah, so this is, um, this is for the current year and right. the revenues for the sales taxes, they, we don't receive them until um, September. So we accrue them. So all of this will change once we close the books. This um, will radically change and we'll, we're gonna have a surplus for sure on the current year. Uh, and I mean, we already we can already have the estimate. So this is year to date actuals as opposed to as of what date? As of what date? As of um, last week. And 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 it, it does look strange because we haven't received um, some of the um, um, property taxes and especially the sales taxes and other revenues that need to be accrued as well. So on page uh, um, 45, we do have a summary of general fund uh, revenues. And this, is, um, this just uh, provides an overview of the revenues, except that it has a, it's broken down by category. And again, uh, you can see what is uh, being projected for, for next year. One of the big differences here is the grants and donations, as you can see. On this line item, it's a big change compared to other years. That really reflects that 44 or almost 45 million that's proposed for 22, 23, because it jumps so fast. Yes. Up to 45. That's, so it's really from the due to the grant. Yes. So okay. if, if you look at the chart, one of the, uh, the the dark blue that's yes. related to the grants. And so that's one of the Brand reasons new. why it jumps so high. Brand new. Mm -hmm. Total grant total grants is the uh, Prop 68 and the Caltrans grant, correct? That's, that's about that, $8 million worth of grant funding. That is correct, but we also have the ARPA. Okay. And that would have the that second, would have been captured in this last fiscal year as well. 
So we we, we would capture in the current year half of it, 2.5 million, and then the rest of it, 2. or 2.4 million for next year. So we're almost $11 million difference in grants. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was like four and a half for one, four and a half for the other, and then the 2.4, something like that. I think so. And and we can we can see on the details as to the specific grants, but uh, potentially we could have also grants uh, from uh, prior years. But mainly you're right is the Prop 68. And yeah, the, uh, that's the 90% uh, rule. I mean, most like of it's being captured there. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah, Caltrain is, is about 4.6. The Prop 68 is like 2.5 or 2.6. Six, yeah. And as um, Roger clarified, the second installment of the ARPA funding is 2.4. <laughs> On uh, uh, this is a, a quick overview. I'm not going to go over the whole book uh, because the city manager has more info. But uh, really quick, uh, on page 46, general fund expenditures by department. This has a, a breakdown of the different departments. Uh, and then on page um, uh, 47, it, it again it repeats the information of a profit and loss, but. It, except that it has the breakdown by category on the revenues and expenses. So it gives you an overview of the breakdown. This one, uh, you're gonna see the similar theme in other areas, uh, but this is on the general fund and this is general fund expenditures budget changes. Uh, what that means is that it compares the uh, prior year or the current year budget against the proposed budget. And then you can see the dollar change and a percentage change between those two budgets. It also gives a history of the year 1920 and 2021 20, actuals. This is broken by department. And uh, if you notice uh, each department, you can dive in into summary levels. For example, the city manager, you can see the wages labor cost, operations, um, educational, uh, and other departments, you can see uh, the changes on budget to budget uh, for your, you know, for your information. So that's what that's uh, providing in, in this pages. On uh, page 50, 53, it does give a more detail of uh, the accounts on the general fund, especially this is beneficial for the uh, revenues. Uh, we can see a specific accounts. Uh, uh, as you can see on the taxes, you can see all the details, line items, of what makes up those taxes and uh, fees for services, license and permits, and so on and, and so forth. So moving on to um, page uh, 65. Uh, this is an example of um, educational partnership of the um, details accounts for that particular department. And you can see the, uh, the actual um, history, um, actual for 1819, 1920, 2021, and then the budget. Uh, I do want to point out something that uh, uh, Dennis here uh, caught that um, we're going to fix this for, for the final budget, but basically the 11 month actual uh, is a mistake, it's a repeat of the actual 2021. So that's, we're, we'll make sure that we fix that column. On the summary level, the, the, the amounts are correct, but it's on the detail levels that are, um, that I made that mistake there. So all of those figures in that column? Yes, the eleven-month column—they're—they're uh, mm -hmm. um, they're incorrect, um, but the rest of it is is correct. On the summary level that I previously previously showed, they they are correct. Well, it's not a huge amount, so I guess we won't get too excited, huh? Is that right? Yeah, it, if you look at the third column from the left, Mayor, the actual for 2021, yeah. and then look at the 11 month actual right. 20, it just grabbed the, the system, grabbed the same data. Oh, okay. um, this is some of the glitches we're still working out with the budget module within Munis. Uh, 
um, okay, which Roger is making progress, but you know, there is some glitches we're working out there. Okay. <clears throat> so on page 59, I know there was um, a request from uh, council member Givens about the breakdown of city council budget. This provides you some information. Of course, we'll take feedback if, uh, if, if there's a need to reduce that. We're also making some improvements as to the accounting uh, uh, for the, um, how we charge, how we make charges uh, across uh, departments. Uh, on page, um, we'll switch to page 106. Really quick, Roger, if you can pause for a second. Yeah. We, uh, Roger's provided us detail on what's been charged to city council budget and to what he's referring to is we have gone through the exercise of identifying certain expenditures that would charge to the city council budget. Historically, it's the way they've been charged. So for example, LAFCO dues, um, which should be in another department or charged to the city council budget. Um, League of California cities, other scripts, uh, other month, annual dues that we pay to that, like Kearney DC was being charged to the city council budget. So that may have been the appropriate place to, to put them, um, but it doesn't represent true expenditures directly related to the city council in terms of what you may have in terms of your budget, right? So more 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 directly related to council expenditures would be for like any travel any training you're attending mm -hmm. any conferences you're you're going to um any mileage reimbursement um which is typically what you'll see in a city council budget but we're going to break down and provide that to you we may end up still at the end of the day charge those uh annual dues to the city council budget but maybe give it a different line item so it's clear that those are non-council directly uh, related expenditures. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. So uh, on the city council, one of the big items is the community promotion, which could be adjusted as well, if uh, uh, depending on what council's feedback is as well. So moving on to page um, 106. This is for the enterprise funds. Um, and again, it provides a budget to budget comparison on the different funds. As you can see the water, wastewater, refuse, and so on. And you can compare the budget um, to budget uh, current year versus next year, dollar change and percentage change. As you can see, water operations represents almost 64% of the enterprise funds. Uh, what's nice about this report is that uh, you can also see the breakdown on the different funds. So on water operations, you can see the cost of lab the labor cost and other costs as well. And you can also see the wastewater. So all of this is before we jump into the details. Um, you can look at it at a glance and, um, and see the budget from, from that point of view. So page 108, um, it gives a, uh, a summary for the combination of the different enterprise funds. So you can see the water, wastewater, refuse, rail, public transit, fiber, and total. So this is a proposed budget, uh, profit and loss, revenues, ex operating expenses, and then the net income at the bottom. Um, once, once we move towards the next uh, page on page uh, 109, then we can see a specific to water fund. And at that point, um, it, it gives a historical perspective for the water fund and also the proposed budget as well. What is, what is debt service? Uh, so, this is a, um, I have to look into the detail as to, uh, so basically 
one of the plans that we have is to exercise the general fund uh, loan into the water fund. And uh, even though this revenue does not reflect the transfer in yet from um, the general fund, but once we do exercise that, we will have to pay it back to the general fund and have that debt payment back to the general fund. Um, this still needs to be reviewed as to how long would the debt be? Uh, you know, we're, we're estimating about $1.5 million of, of loans. We still need to answer the question of the rate study as well. And um, one, of the, one of the nice things is uh, we do expect a transfer from uh, ARPA funds mm -hmm. of about a million dollars for the meters. Um, but it's still not sufficient, as you can see, and, and, and that's why we, need, we will need to transfer that money from the general fund. That general fund money has been already been allocated. It's been assigned on the fund balance, so it's not going to affect the unassigned portion. And that was done a few years back. Thank you. So where did they show the debt service before? That's not brand new for the incoming year. We've had debt service before. So where was it before? Because you're not showing anything here. So so the we still haven't transferred any money from general funding to the water fund at all. We haven't, it was planned to have a loan, but we haven't had the need yet until now that we're getting closer with uh, capital projects. It's getting expensive. <clears throat> we have to install the meters. And we're not able to cover all the capital and operating expenses at the same time. At that point, is uh, it's been allocated in the fund balance, and now we're um, we can now take the money in and transfer it in the upcoming year, most likely. Okay. Okay. All right. I think I understand that. Just my main mayor and council. Um, historically, the city has not issued debt. Debt service will usually be for bonds. Yeah. Uh, if you have debt service, you issue bonds. That's what you categorize it as debt service. That's what you do your annual debt service payment. So the city has not issued water or sewer bonds. No. What we've had in the past is redevelopment bonds. So for that, maybe that's what you're referring to, that for debt service, uh, we've showed it in non-water and wastewater. It may have been mm -hmm. in another department. But to my knowledge, that's the only debt service we've had is related to redevelopment agency bonds that the city issued in the past. But okay. to my knowledge, in looking at the CAFR, um, there's not any debt service as of today in the past for water or sewer. Okay. Had the city issued, say, a revenue bond to do, you know, water projects, you know, numerous water wells or or or, or water distribution lines or in the wastewater and we issued bonds, this is where we would show that debt service, okay. that annual payment. Yeah, because the wastewater has been showing it for the last three years, albeit small amount. So the wastewater, um, and maybe Mike can help me, but um, there's a, a, a joint um, with the uh, wastewater facility. Mm -hmm. And I do think they do acquire, have acquired debt Mm -hmm. And so we have a portion related to that partnership, but um, I would have to look into more details to into the agreement to know the intricacies of that. But but that's I think that's what that is. We're not paying interest on that portion of the debt, are we? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. Without I, I, not having all the knowledge, but my understanding is the city might correct me if I'm We're a third owner. We're no, a three-part owner in that facility. A third owner? Yeah. Depends on the, it depends on the facilities. The pipelines are a different ratio. Yeah. So so our, our share of any expansion, any debt incurred with the uh, wastewater regional wastewater treatment plant would be a third of that. So to your question, Mayor Pro Tem, there could be interest we're paying on that because if the annual debt service for North of the River, who owns the plant, technically is say a million dollars or just throwing numbers out there. Ours would be a third of that, which would include any interest payments as well. Because they're they're getting they're paying the principal plus the interest. Right. Annual annual debt service. So they would just bill us for a third of that. Okay. Yeah. Oh boy, <clears throat> I'm taking a little while. I apologize. Um, 
So I'm, I'm giving uh, um, a quick overview. So this is internal service funds. Again, similar concept where you list, where we list the um, internal service funds. What page are you on? Uh, this is page 141. Okay, thank you. And you can see the changes and then also the breakdown into the different funds for your benefit. Um, also, the city manager's uh, uh, message, it gives a good overview of the general fund um, and a good analysis there as well. Uh, I do want to jump into, uh, before I pass the time to city manager, to page 34. So page 34 is a citywide overview, and it, it doesn't answer the question on a specific funds, but it does answer the question on a global basis for the whole city as to how, uh, how much in revenues for the whole city and the changes. And you can see the breakdown by category and also by, uh, by department. Uh, you can also see um, as an example, if you look, if you look on page uh, 35, we can see the breakdown by the um, enterprise funds and you can see the revenues. Uh, similar concept is if you, if you go into page 36, um, I, I really like this because um, citywide, you can see the labor cost. Um, you can do some comparisons, uh, budget to budget and prior years and the changes and also by department. And then uh, on page 37, you can also see it by the fund group as well, different funds. So on page 38, uh, this is a uh, very useful summary of citywide because you can see the fund balance beginning from the audited report. So 1920, we can see the estimated for 2021 uh, and eventually the estimated fund balance for the current year. Once we add the revenues, operating expenses and make adjustments to capital and transfers, then we can uh, have an estimate for the ending fund balance for next uh, fiscal year. And this is broken by uh, the different fund groups with uh, general fund being on top. And, and then um, uh, different areas with a special, uh, excuse me, the enterprise funds, special revenues, internal service funds, and then the capital projects and impact fees at the bottom. And then you can see the health of the city as a whole. Uh, it's in a we estimate that it's, uh, we will continue to accumulate reserves in uh, the upcoming year. On page uh, 39, um, it's, it's a different view, except that it focuses on um, citywide um, revenues and uh, it gives a historical perspective as well. So very useful um, summary report. And page 41 gives you a similar report, except that is for expenses citywide. So um, with that, if you have any questions, I'll, um, that's all I have and I'll pass it to the city manager. All right, Council, I know we did an overview of that. Roger has a lot more information of you at this point. If you want to hear more from him in terms of the budget overview of particular departments, uh, it's your discretion. And so I'm, I'm asking if you'd like to, if that suffice or you want more detail on that before we proceed. Anybody? I was going to say that this um, binder here is where you put put together really nice. So we'll say thank you to you and your staff and everyone who's involved. Thank you. Uh, there's some, some extra work that I forgot to mention. For example, the chapter history is really nice work that Rachel helped us put together a city profile. It's very well done by Rachel and it gives a nice history of the city. 
So with that, Mayor and Council, just want to say that the proposed budget uh, continues to maintain a robust financial position for the city. It's a balanced budget, maintains healthy reserves. Uh, there's no general fund debt, uh, which is always good. We continue to pay down our unfunded liability with PERS and that we basically don't have any unfunded liability with PERS. Um, and just as important is that it, can, it maintains the current service levels. As you see in the budget, we're not proposing any reduction of services. We're not re reducing in any department the uh, level of service that we have in there. In fact, what you'll hear shortly is, at least in the public safety, uh, looking to increase uh, and expand some of the services we provide there. Uh, and just as important is it's a very conservative approach and that our expenditure are modest in terms of just the cost of doing business and what we need to provide the, the services that we provide. Our revenue projections are conservative. They're not too optimistic because we know that there's some economic factors that can impact our revenues, our sales tax, our property tax. You know, there's a lot of discussions for depending on what economists you listen to that there there's a recession upon us. And so this budget reflects that, that uh, possibility. And so it's very conservative in that regard. Uh, but overall, like we said, it's a, it's a balanced budget, uh, maintains the current service levels, and uh, it's looking to continue to provide the quality of life that our community has expected from us. Continue? Sure. Okay. Okay, this next section, Mayor Council, as you know, uh, a couple of workshops ago, department directors, we presented to you a list of uh, new equipment and uh, fleet vehicles that we were one wanting to replace. And then two, some of the items were new You're requests. You're on page two, aren't you? Um, I'm moving over to the PowerPoint presentation. I'm no longer in the book, Mayor. Oh, okay. There isn't anything in here. Okay. Yeah. I thought I saw something before. Okay. Fine. Yeah, in the message book there was, but okay. we, we updated our presentation to reflect some of the changes. Okay. Yeah. And as I said in my opening remarks, we've gone back, I've met with the department directors and we fine tune this list and we're bringing it to you uh, those only those items that we feel are uh, necessary at this time. So, so for example, in the citywide equipment, uh, this is a complete list that was shown to you. Um, those items that were not requested at this time have been striked through. Uh, so for example, the Bobcat grinder, the skip loader, the equipment trailer, and the new mower. Uh, at this time, we're not requesting that. However, in terms of new equipment that we are requesting is a paint machine. Uh, we believe that we, our crews do need that. As you know, we are going to be reassigning two of our drivers from the refuse, soon to be refuse, uh, no, former refuse department into streets. And so this paint machine will allow us to uh, do a lot of the striping in around the schools and citywide. That's at a cost of $25,000. In PD, um, there's uh, some equipment we're looking to replace, the MDC replacement and in the amount of 60,000, the event tied audio recorder. I stand corrected and I previously thought that was the dictation recording system that our officers use, it's not. It's the actual recording system at the communication center. So whenever somebody calls 911 or any of the dispatch lines, it's the actual recording system that's recording those calls coming through. Um, and that, my understanding is, is no longer supported. It's all antiquated, and so we need to replace that. The forklift um, is, not, is uh, not being asked at this time. I'll come back to that in, in a minute. And then in IT, we are asking for, um, I'm not going to pretend to know what all this is. I know Aaron's mm -hmm. here. Um, Janet, Johnny's out right now, but it does involve some technology upgrades and our um, switches, uh, additional security systems with our Teltech alarm, and uh, some uh, data center upgrades over at the PD. And those are the three items. The forklift. I'll come back to in a minute. Over in the vehicles, uh, one of the new requests would be a police vehicle, and that is only contingent on council approving an additional police officer so that PD could do dedicated patrols at Gossamer Grove. Uh, if you do not approve the new police officer, 
position, then we won't need a vehicle. So this would come off. As part of the vehicle replacement program that PD has been on, um, is it the replacement of two patrol vehicles? This is consistent with the policy the PD has in every budget in which we re replace two of the vehicles. In public facilities, public works is replacing uh, one of the half ton trucks with a three quarter ton. Um, this would have been a replacement with another half ton truck, but we're looking to just go ahead and go with a three quarter ton, which would give us additional versatility and being able to haul uh, a greater amount of weight. And so we're not restricted to just having, um, needing to get larger trucks to be able to tow. So in along with that is another truck for streets, uh, a budget, excuse me, a budget, the bucket truck in the amount of 100,000. Uh, we do need to replace our current budget uh, bucket truck. Hmm. And then the water truck, uh, we're still asking for that. Um, I know that there was some comment about the amount uh, being uh, too 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 small of a dollar amount of a hundred thousand. Staff tells me that you know the reason they asked for a hundred thousand is because they're of the opinion they might be able to uh, successfully uh, acquire an, a used water truck for that amount. So we're still asking for the hundred thousand for the water truck for a used water truck. In the event we're not able to successfully acquire a used water truck for the 100,000 or less, then we would forgo the water truck and then use that 100,000 for the purchase of the forklift. So this is where you see the forklift here. Um, so that's how we're proposing that. 100,000 for the water tank truck, if we can acquire one for that amount or less. If we can't, then we'll use that 100,000 for the forklift. So it's not both, it's just one or the other being contingent on being able to find a used water truck. And then a replacement of uh, one additional truck in the water department and that's uh, in the fleet, the amount we're asking for is 590,000 and over and equipment is 186,000. Uh, in planning, as you know, we are doing the housing element. Uh, as a matter of fact, later this evening in our regular agenda, there's a, an agenda item under consent to award the housing element work to a, an outside consultant in the amount of 288,000. Uh, there were budget, budgeted monies in last year's budget that were not used. So we're carrying those over. And the difference we're asking for the 288, uh, there's approximately 250,000 that we're carrying over from the current budget year 21-22, plus the city was successful in receiving a, a REAP grant in the amount of 65,000. So when you take that total, we're about 125,000 short to be able to complete the housing element. The housing element is required by state statute and that we have to update that every, depending what cycle we fall under. Shafter falls in the eight year cycle. And so our current housing element expires in 23. And so we're asking for that additional 125,000. This is, I would say more uh, a mandate and that we have to do it. And so therefore this is one of those items that we really don't have much choice in order to comply with state statute. So in summary, here's the uh, proposed impact to the general fund. And it's broken down in ongoing costs and, and one-time requests. Uh, one-time requests in the CIP is, um, Go back. Was this covered in here, Roger? No. So the hundred thousand here and CIP, which is not included, uh, just to give you some background, we had previously asked a hundred thousand for um, remodeling the learning center, and then a hundred thousand for the doors. The hundred thousand for the learning center, we're not asking for that. Uh, we're having um, some staffing changes there. One, and then two. Um, it was an estimate, a very rough estimate. So what we're proposing to do is to get some estimates for that, uh, actually bring in a contractor or two to give us a, some more concrete estimates and then bring that back to you for consideration. We anticipate doing that at mid-year so that we can see how we're tracking with our expenditures and revenue. And if the budget affords it, then we can um, reevaluate and consider that at that time. Uh, the other, the 100,000 that we are asking for is to replace the doors here at City Hall and at the Veterans Hall. 
with ADA compliant doors. Uh, right now we have old doors that were outside of compliance with uh, American Disability Act. And so we are still requesting that 100,000 to be able to do um, the replacement of those doors. The fleet uh, and replacement cost is 530,000 with 70,000 being a new request. And then equipment, 160,000 for replacement and 30,000 in new request. These are rounding up numbers, by the way, because the paint machine is 25, but it rounds, it's rounding up by five, $5,000 increments. And then the housing element in 125,000, again, it's rounding up. And then ongoing cost would be um, the additional police officer and the amount of 120, it's actually 125, but again, it's rounding up to 130. And then uh, Chief was requesting uh, an additional 150,000 in overtime. As previously shared with you, one of the issues we have in the overtime, the way it's set up right now is employees are allowed to cash out their vacation or CTO. And so whenever they cash out their vacation and CTO throughout the year, it hits the overtime line item budget. So it's misrepresenting the overtime budget. Um, so depending on how many hours these employees are selling back as part of what they're allowed pursuant to the MOU, then it's going to throw the overtime budget off. So what we're proposing is to earmark a separate line item and call it vacation cash out or whatever we end up calling it to track that expenditure. So that's separate apart from the overtime and doesn't misrepresent what the true overtime cost is. So for that, um, we're asking $150,000 um, for that. Um, and so what it brings the, the total amount and new request ongoing costs is approximately 300,000 um, for that total. So combined in the one time, we're looking at approximately a million dollars. Uh, that would our one time request to be able to purchase equipment and vehicle. And then in ongoing costs is just shy of 300,000 in new um, uh, new, new, new expenditures related to one additional officer and the overtime cost. So, um, available for questions, discussion, council, uh, if you want to discuss among yourselves, any questions of staff, like I said, we have the directors here, um, but then eventually I'd like to come back and get a thumbs up or thumbs down on those items that we are recommending for consideration. So for information technology, the difference between what you've proposed versus what is noted here. So instead of getting the additional equipment, you guys are just talking about doing a outsourcing for cyber solutions for 47,000? On the 28th, the 12th, and the 11th? On the agenda. On the agenda, there's a note here that talks about information technology, uh, not requesting capital items, but it is requesting a $47,000 increase to outsource cybersecurity. So does that mean that Scott, let me bring up because uh, if you say no capital, but I'm looking here and I see a capital, so I'm just yeah, request. slightly confused. It's uh, yeah. I wonder if if the line item on the staff report was missed on the PowerPoint, so that's possible. Yeah, that but forty-seven thousand. The outsourcing is that um, subscription to Arctic Wolf, the cybersecurity uh, gotcha. detection. Service. So it is. It's, yeah. So the Juniper, the Juniper equipment, the Teltech equipment, uh, and the data center is still being needed. Requested. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. So I, I just the way that's read. Yeah. Good catch. It's just the mission on this on the PowerPoint. Thank you. Yeah. And Mike, you're going to kill me, but you removed like three vehicles. There's not a need at all. I mean, I know there's always a need. I I understand that, but. You know, walking with the conservative approach versus a non-conservative approach. Is there a middle ground, or is it like, no, I can, I can, you know, go by another year or so with what we have? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Givens, the um, intent here is to, at a, at a minimum, reinstate the past uh, truck replacement program that was in place a couple of year, years ago before COVID. One of the trucks, I believe, was to um, be assigned to the new streets foreman that we were hoping to uh, um, mm -hmm. add to the uh, um, organization, but uh, realistically, it's gonna take several months to define what that street foreman should be 
and re actually recruit it. So there's really not a need to um, have that new truck for that new position in the budget at this time. We can revisit it mid-year. Gotcha. And then the other truck, I believe, was uh, connected to with the uh, mower, the new mower for the parks. It was kind of a package deal where we had the truck, the trailer, and uh, the mower. And so we're going to defer that as well, possibly to mid-year. So there's, those are the new trucks in play that we discussed that we're gonna um, recommend deferring, but we're reinstating the past practice of the fleet replacement program. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I just wanted to make sure I was on the same page. That makes a lot of sense as you explain that. Thank you. You know, while you're still up, <laughs> um, because you didn't mention this either, was the one on animal control and I don't know that any others on the council are aware of it, but you know, I was involved in that and we did go out and we did talk about the safety issue and all. What do you want to add on that one? Well, in the staff report, um, Mayor and Council, we uh, mentioned that we may want to step back and take a more comprehensive approach to assessing and look at it. I know the chief and um, our animal control manager uh, put together a rough list of items. There's like five or six, um, but I think it does warrant a discussion in terms of what are those priorities. We definitely need the uh, parking lot, but there's some other items within the building were also identified, like another restroom for staff, um, some of the kennel work, uh, additional security measures. And so I think my recommendation is to take a more comprehensive approach and identifying what those needs are and then prioritizing and then identifying based on our financial means of which ones, which of those items we can do, or do we just do the parking lot and not do the others? But what it allow us to do is in future budgets is to plan accordingly and say, okay, this year we do, say for example, we do the parking lot. The next year we do the bathrooms or we do the kennels, depending on what we can't afford in the budget. So that's the city manager's recommendation, um, but you as a council can elect to go ahead and move forward with, we had proposed the parking lot project. If you wish to go forward with that at this time, then that's open to you as a council. But our, my recommendation is to take a more comprehensive approach and assess everything that we need to do out there. Any other comments, Greg? No, I, I don't disagree with that. And I I think that that and the library piece fall in the same line to me because I feel like it's just a number that was thrown out there. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not saying no, it just it feels very very vague um i'm going to use you david for for an example but you know two offices to relocate two people to a, a space for a hundred thousand dollars man i hope you have a taj mahal sitting over there because that's a lot of money to it's a space. little tiny space it's not very big and so, and so that's yeah. i feel like that was just um a very vague Mm -hmm. statement and so for me i just want to see more detail what is the assessment what do we need what is it actually going to cost we can do soft estimates on that and so just having an idea of what we're looking at is is really important to me yeah and in full disclosure we do have a private uh donation uh up to five thirty five thousand dollars i reached out to that potential donor to let them know that we were going to be taking a, our recommendation was going to be to take a more comprehensive uh, assessment of the facility and if they're still willing to make that contribution at a future date, that obviously we welcome that. Um, but if we're talking about doing asphalt work, I think we know from recent experience that asphalt um, itself is very, it's fluctuating right now. And we'll use the example with the former MCCF, that strip of the parking lot that we had to re resurface, um, as you saw from previous, uh, previous agenda item that we brought to you, Six months prior or four four months prior, we had an estimate of about twelve fifteen thousand dollars, and in less than six months, it jumped to about twenty five thousand. And so, what we think the cost may be for a parking lot, just for the front section of the animal control uh, shelter, there is there's also the driveway, all the way to the back from the gate. That if you take a look at it, there's potholes. It's it's very rough. And if we're going to do asphalt work, I think it would behoove of us to do the entire yeah. driveway and anything related to asphalt that we do the entire lane, just from economies of scale, engineering, drainage issues, for example, and address that all at once instead of just doing the front. Well, piece. yeah, and after noticing that the price of lumber is starting to come down, too, so maybe that'll all come down, too. I mean, it's unknown that we don't know yet. Right. Uh, okay. So that's my recommendation, but you as a council policy decision makers, you can decide to do something different with that.
Any other comments, questions, guys? Forever. Mm -hmm. The oh, God. for a long time. <laughs> but these are these are old buildings, and um, we've been out of compliance, you know, for a very long period of time. I, I think it's you've we've all been over. I mean, we were all using the vets hall last year, and we're definitely out of compliance. And that is not only a public facility, but it's heavily used by the public. Yeah. And um, same thing with City Hall. And even though we have in other facilities, we could do some other ADA compliant projects. I think Veterans Hall and City Hall, which is the most accessible to the public, is why we're recommending we'll we do those. The now. buildings are not going to go away. So yeah. but we've been putting money every year in ADA somewhere. I think that that's another topic that, I mean, it's not going to get cheaper. It's just going to get more expensive down the line. So doing it sooner will probably be saving money than waiting for later. Yeah, and uh, Dennis, correct me if I'm wrong, if you can come up to the podium, please. <laughs> but during COVID, when we were uh, having our council meetings over at the Veterans Hall, if you recall, we were doing that for a good several months last year. Um, we identified the, the need to replace those doors. And I think it was an amount of between 80,000 or so, something like that. Yeah, you can provide a little more detail. About a hundred and hundred and some thousand. Um, so. There's a lot of doors there, and the doors are very old and oh boy. very temperamental. So um, it's wise to obviously get them improved. So, and it's a block building. Yeah, that so doesn't help. Yeah, so. doors aren't cheap. Yeah, so for that, we we have a, a fairly good idea of what that cost is going to be because, like I said, Dennis and when Marsha was here, they went over there to take a look at it, and I think they even got some quotes for those doors at the time, and they're old facilities so we're, we're thinking on the worst case scenario replacement of the door jams and other costs like that so thank you Dan. okay thank you do we need a motion for approval? well at this time i like to maybe just go down the list of the items and give me a thumbs up thumbs down rather than ask you to approve all of them that'd be nice but <laughs> i'm sure that your directors would be happy but um, just in the, I think it might be best to just take each of the items. If you can just give me, unless you're prepared to approve everything that. Well, I you're not hearing through. negatives. I mean, our, everyone seems to be pretty happy with it. Is there anything we don't want to consider? I mean, I, I understood that. And the reason I brought up the animal control is because it, it was brought up. It was a safety issue because of the way that it's constructed now. But, you know, we, it's been there and it's been used. It is probably more people going out to the animal shelter today than they had in the past because of the programs that we have out there and that sometimes uh, they have lineup of cars so they have had some that have fallen off of that little ledge because of the way that it's designed so but it, it can wait longer i mean it's it's something that has to be done so mm -hmm. you're not hearing negatives from me and i'm, I'm appreciative yeah. of, of each of you who went back at this and kind of looked and said okay right. where do i need to sharpen at and what do i need to do Mike, I never would have thought about the streets forming thing. I mean, it takes forever to hire somebody. So that makes a lot of sense the way you looked at that. Um, yeah, I, I think you went the right route with this. Thank you. Gilbert, you have any comments? I, um, as like I said last time, I think everything's needed, but I think as, yeah. as well, putting things in priorities, I think by you all going back and looking at it again and coming with this new proposal, I think it's good. I mean, we could continue going on and on and trying to shave more and more and more. Per soon, we get to nothing, or, or we, we, or other than that, we'll face a bigger consequences. We'll find a truck, somebody broken down, some city truck broken down, or some somebody trying to sue us because something's not fixed. So at some point, you gotta do what you have to do and do what's what, what's right. So I think at this time, I think what was proposed is good for me. Any other comments? Um, I like the idea of upgrading the trucks from half to three quarter because i don't think that there's anything a half ton can do that three quarter can't do and they're just a little bit more durable and a little bit more more um, more options to work with with a heavier truck do you have something else yeah so Marion council just for um Clear direction and clarification. The one-time request is approximately uh, one one point zero two million, and you're fine with giving me thumbs up and 
moving forward with those. Just know. keep the revenue coming in. We'll do that. Um, <laughs> with the ongoing. I mean, you guys hear that all the time. Yes. I mean, that's yes. if you don't have the revenue, we won't be spending it. So there's Bob back there. That target just zeroed in on him. Yeah. Um, well, everybody's. You know, we're all together. Yeah. The uh, with regards to the ongoing costs, I just verified with um, Scott that the uh, cyber wolf. I'm just kidding. Arctic wolf. Arctic wolf. I know. Great wolf. Um, cyber. <laughs> The uh, cybersecurity uh, is an annual uh, renewal, so I would ask for fifty thousand of that, just to round up. It's forty-seven thousand, um, so that would bring the ongoing cost from approximately three hundred thousand, three hundred fifty thousand. Um, are you fine with moving forward? That that would be the the police officer, the police overtime, and the ongoing forty-seven thousand for the. Cybersecurity. Well, and another emergency comes up, something else can go away. I mean, it just our staff knows that. I mean, it's. Yeah, we're very fluid. It's we, just we, a plan, so yeah. we'll we'll make it work. Okay, so uh, the three hundred fifty thousand to include the forty seven thousand thumbs up. Okay, thank you, Council. Well, thank you, Staff. No. Yeah, I know, and for all the time that Rogers had to put in, he's so new with all of this and the new system and all, and it is pretty mind boggling to go through this book. And that's what I was telling Chad. I didn't, I couldn't study all of those pages where it keeps breaking it down, but as we begin to learn, it'll come easier, um, you know. Yeah, and, and if any of you, as always, you know, want to come in and sit down with Roger yeah. um, and have him provide a more detail and kind of mm -hmm. walk you through the budget and have it answer any questions as you go through it, please let us reach out to either myself or him directly and, you know, we'll set time aside to go to sit down with you. Yeah, I was going to uh, mention that, that I'm available. If you want me to walk through it one on one with specific questions, I'll be happy to. Okay. Well, I'd like to say thank you for all the extra work because I, I saw the, the look in your eyes when you first came up with uh, with what you were requesting. And we kind of said, no, I didn't want you to think that we just slammed the door shut. So I appreciate the extra work. <laughs> uh, you can see that you guys have made an effort to kind of uh, cut back and scale back a little bit. I appreciate that. And um, I like the idea of, of planning things and, and getting on a system. And when we get to that point to where something needs to be replaced, we're doing it at that scale, not at a big lump scale. So thank you for that. Tim. Mayor Council, we have nothing further. That's good because I think dinner's coming at five. Oh, ah, okay. No. <laughs> Chad would like that. All right, if there is nothing further, motion to adjourn, please. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. And we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. We are adjourned.